This is a very big worry, uh, and especially it's a big worry for those of us who are involved in church-based services. Um, I remember uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, the church couldn't even think about getting involved in antiretroviral treatment because we did not have the funding and the cost of the medicines were so high. And so our approach mainly was to try to help people die well and with dignity. Uh, and then when the, uh, the medicine prices went down and we began to see some, uh, some significant funding mechanisms like the Global Fund to fight AIDS, TB, and malaria, and like the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief for the United States, and some other government, uh, governmental bilateral programs, um, the church began to reach out. We already had the health care infrastructure, and we also had the community-based care, uh, and so it was much easier for the church to move in and do quality antiretroviral treatment. Um, I encouraged many church leaders in my work uh, throughout the world to start those treatments treatment programs and now every day uh, I am pained as I get email messages from them saying you got us into this and now we have 90,000 people in our program uh, and what do we do because the money is not going to be there for long uh, and yet these church people feel responsible uh, to continue to accompany uh, the people under their care uh, with treatment they they feel that it's a lifelong commitment that they made and yet many governments are saying well there's a global economic crisis or now we're going to move from AIDS to global health care or to uh, social development. We need all of those things in this world and we have enough funding in this world to be able to provide for all of them. Uh, it's a problem of where we place our priorities. Uh, but there are many, many people uh, in the church and beyond the church who are very worried about what happens to these people who are depending for their lives now on the antiretroviral treatment. Uh, last year, uh, the Catholic HIV and AIDS Network uh, did a study of the impact on of funding cutbacks and flatlining uh, on our programs. And um, all of the respondents to our survey uh, made it very clear that they already were seeing those cutbacks or that flatlining. They were being told by some governmental or by even global fund sources, um, you need to choose one person in your family who's infected. We can't give you medicine for the whole family. Um, in many developing countries, especially in Africa, Africans are not going to choose one member of the family to benefit from these medicines. They're going to share the medicines and they'll be not effective for any of the people in the family. So we have a, a real crisis before us in terms of dealing with this, uh, uh, the funding issues.